We were doing very well. After two years of building FeedHive and a somewhat linear but steady revenue growth, we were finally starting to see something that looked like a hockey stick. The social media management tool we've been working on so hard was finally starting to get traction. Revenue was higher than ever before. And then Elon Musk came by and smacked the shit out of us with the most ridiculous new pricing for accessing Twitter's API. A free plan, a basic tier at $100 a month, and then finally, an enterprise tier starting at $42,000 per month. Yep, that's right, $100 a month, enterprise starting at $42,000 per month. And not only that, they announced these new tiers less than 24 hours before rolling them out, forcing us to send out an email to all of our users the day after and announcing that we were gonna stop supporting Twitter. I think it's fair to say that the hockey stick didn't quite continue. In this video, I'll reveal how bad this is. I'll give you some insights into how this hurt our business, how we're planning on getting back on track, and I'll share my perspective on the situation at Twitter and why this might not actually be as bad as it seems. All right, to be honest, there actually had been rumors going around about the $42,000 price increase for a few weeks, but I simply didn't believe it at the time. It seemed completely unreal to me. But a few hours before Twitter publicly announced it, I was invited to a Slack group with a bunch of founders from other well-known Twitter and social media management tools. Some of them had already been in contact with Twitter's enterprise team and had them confirm that this was actually going to happen. And in this Slack group, panic started to spread. Everyone was in total disbelief. We knew that some of the big tools like Buffer and Hootsuite already had agreements with Twitter in place. And there's a handful of Twitter tools that decided to suck it up and pay, even though it would be hammering their monthly revenue almost back to zero. After all, Twitter's their entire business. What else could they do? There are a bunch of other small indie Twitter tools that just had to call it a day and close down. Then there are tools like us at FeedHive. We aren't anywhere near as big as Buffer or Hootsuite, but we could manage $42,000 a month if that's what we decided. But here's the thing, I wouldn't mind paying. I was actually very positive when I first heard they were planning on introducing a paid tier, but $42,000 per month is just too much. It's too much to pay for a single social integration on a platform with a relatively small user base, evidently struggling to survive and working with an enterprise team that quite frankly doesn't really want you there. And there's no doubt about this. They raised the prices to an obscene level to get rid of bots and automation, not to do business. By the end of the day, they don't really want us there. To me, this felt like a ransom more than anything else. It would have been a foolish business decision to go along with this. So we decided to announce to our users that our Twitter integration would be disabled. And as expected, we took a good hit from this. We had the worst single churn day ever since we launched. A bunch of users immediately canceled their subscriptions as soon as they saw this message. Now, let's take a quick look at how our users actually use the platform. On an average month, tweets make up around 29% of all posts FeedHive publishes. Around 12% of users exclusively used FeedHive for Twitter. The users who left right away were primarily in this group. And Totally understandable. If you look at this from a financial perspective, things weren't actually as bad as one might have expected. We have four pricing plans, ranging from $19 a month to $299 a month. And by far, most users in this group were on the creator plan. Some were on the brand plan, but only a small group of users on the business and agency plans left because of Twitter. Which means that while a lot of users did leave our platform, if we look at this in terms of revenue, we're actually only down a few percent from all of this. Normally, we grow somewhere between seven and 15% each month. So clearly this absorbed the growth for this month, but the fact that we didn't take a larger financial hit was surprising and obviously very fortunate. And of course, we started talking to a lot of our users and we learned a few surprising things. The reason that this didn't hit as hard as we have feared is that a big group of users had already lost faith in Twitter when Elon Musk took over last year, some even before that. So some users had already canceled their subscriptions, but it happened gradually, so we didn't really feel it that hard. Other users who used FeedHive for cross-posting simply stopped sharing content on Twitter and focused on platforms like LinkedIn and Instagram instead. And when we investigated our analytics, this is definitely backed up by numbers. Indeed, it's clear to see a noticeable decline in tweets published from FeedHive since around November last year. And personally, I share this view. 
It's been disaster after disaster ever since Elon Musk jumped on board and the future of Twitter is most likely to go in either one of two directions right now. Either it goes bust and closes, or it becomes the new Tumblr. A platform that slowly dies out and ends up being used by close to no one. And I know, I know, people who love Twitter see this differently. You don't want it to die, I get that. And obviously you're very free to disagree with me here. But if you care about your brand, my personal recommendation would be to start being active on other platforms and start moving your audience from Twitter in combination with building a new audience on those platforms. If you keep focusing on Twitter right now, I'm sincerely worried that you'll end up with nothing very soon. Okay, okay, but let's just back up for a second here. Twitter isn't dead at the very moment. Did Feedive completely abandon the platform after this pricing change? As a matter of fact, we did not. You can still use Twitter if you bring your own API key. I know, I know, this sounds horribly technical. It's actually not. You can easily figure this out, even if you're not a programmer or super techie. Basically, you need to open a Twitter developer account and generate an API key, which you will then use to add your Twitter account to Feedhive. This is totally free of charge and it only takes a few minutes to set up. We have a step-by-step -step guide that explains how. So if you're still deeply invested in Twitter, but you really want to keep using Feedhive along with your other social channels, then you can. Check out the guide I have included in the description to see how to set this up. And the future of Feedive? Well, I'm very positive. We're planning on introducing four new social integrations handling communities. This would be Slack, Discord, WhatsApp, and Telegram. And besides that, we're looking into adding support for Mastodon, which is a popular Twitter alternative, and Substack recently launched Nodes, which is very similar to Twitter as well. In fact, I started being active on Substack myself. Their platform looks really good. They don't have an API just yet, but we're definitely keeping a close eye on notes as well. And also, in the aftermath of this whole thing, we decided to run a small experiment. So we increased our ad budget to $42,000 per month. Return on ad spend is keeping up very well so far, and we've been onboarding a bunch of new users recently. So don't get surprised if you start seeing more feed hive ads on YouTube and Facebook these days. All in all, we're good. We're gonna keep betting on all the other amazing platforms out there. If Twitter comes around with a much more reasonable offer, of course, we'll add it to Feedhive again. And until then, we still have a fully working solution where you can bring your own API key. And I'm actually not really supposed to talk about this yet, but we're working on a Feedhive V2, and it's gonna come with a lot of huge improvements and some very exciting new features. More on that on the next product update. If you enjoyed this little breakdown, check out the last product update I did where I show you around Linktrip, the other SaaS product we run. I will see you soon for another product update. Stay tuned.